All right, are there um, specific things to look for, like to spot signs or symptoms? If you're getting gynecomastia. Right. So, you know, the most common thing that patients will describe initially will be nipple sensitivity. And um, they'll, you know, it may not be a lump, they may not have ever had anything like that before. Um, and as I mentioned, that's oftentimes at the beginning of a cycle. Then the trouble really starts when they are finishing the cycle. Because what happens is when they're on their exogenous testosterone support, whatever it is, their, est their testosterone's high. A certain percentage of that will get aromatized to estrogen. When they come off of the testosterone support, the testosterone drops out of the basement, but the estrogen stays high. And that's when that stimulus is greatest. And that's when, after the end of a cycle, they'll notice more t tenderness or sensitivity, and then they may feel a lump. And some patients will even get lactation. Though they can squeeze their nipple and get a little sort of brownish fluid out of there. Oh. Um, so yeah, it's kind of disgusting. Yeah, I never <laughs> experienced such a thing. Fortunately. Thankfully. Um, and, you know, testosterone is the most common agent that we see because that's the most common one used. But certainly there are other um, agents, Tren and uh, Mandrolone or two, that are, at, you know, again, relatively common and may be more likely to cause it. But the problem with you know, supplements, if you're not getting them from the pharmacy, is you're never 100% sure what you're using, so you have to be a little cautious from that perspective. The other thing I've had happen um, that patients have described in the past is they, they took Novodex to get rid of it. Well, Novodex can actually stimulate gynecomastia because it can act as the substrate rather than the blocker. It doesn't happen often, but I, you know, I've had enough patients say, yeah, I went on Novodex and it seemed to get worse. So whether that was the source or if it was some other lapse in timing of their supplementation that caused it, but, um, but that's some. So some of the other blockers are, are more specific. Arimidex, for example, is more specific, so it, it works a little bit more effectively. None of them will get rid of gynecomastia that's already present. It may reduce the it may reduce it a little tiny right. bit. There was a study a number of years ago that looked at medical treatment of gynecomastia, and they decided it was effective, but I think in excess of 50% of the patients went on to have surgery for it anyway. So I don't know what their um, classification was. I don't think it would get you to the point where you could step on stage. Right. Yeah. What about prolactin? What, what is that? Prolactin is a hormone that's secreted by the pituitary gland, and, and that's the mediator in, in many cases that stimulates breast milk or breast uh, gland production. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it will stimulate breast milk production, and that's oh. why the, you can squeeze a little something out of it. Okay. Yeah. So, um, so if someone has a high prolactin, it may be related to what they're taking, or you know, sometimes we see patients who haven't used steroids or anything like that. They come in, but they have an elevated prolactin, and that can be the source of their gynecomastia. Okay. So there is absolutely no um, surefire way to get rid of it aside from surgery. Correct. Right. All right. So in like gynexin. What is that? I don't know. Save your money. <laughs> yeah, I never heard of it. Thank God. It's online. <laughs> okay. It's a multi-billion dollar supplement. Imagine that. Part of the multi-billion dollar supplement company. You should have invented that. I know, right? <laughs> so uh, one more question. Um, you said since 1992, you've done around 900 cases. Right. I, at this point, I do typically 50 to 75 a year. Um, I'd be glad to do 175 a year. Um, there are, you know, other surgeons in New York who claim, you know, one of the surgeons there claims 500 a year. I don't know if that's one, two, or one. Right, right. If I say 75, I did either 75 or 150 of them if they were bilateral. So That is a good question. How often do you get a case where you'll only do one? Unilateral cases are less common, um, but they, they do happen both naturally and um, related to supplement or medication use. Um, you know, it's a much smaller percentage. If I do five or six unilaterals a year, um, that's probably... And oftentimes, someone may come in with more of a unilateral problem, but they have gynecomastia right. on both sides. So I, if, if there's anything there, I treat both sides. Okay. A friend of mine recently did that. He thought he, he only had one. Right. And uh, I'm I like, he's going to tell you... I convinced him otherwise. Yeah. yeah. I don't always, though, because if someone has nothing on the other side... I'm not going to treat it. The problem is if someone's a little chunky, yeah. you know, and you're going to treat one side and you do the liposuction, the potential is that if they're chunky, you're going to have to do a little liposuction on the other side to right. make it symmetric. So, Right. 
Okay. What about prevention? Just in general, you hear of folks just getting gyno removed, period, before any signs come in. Have you ever heard? It? I would never do that. Okay. No. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. If it ain't fixed, don't break. If it ain't broken, don't fix it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure there's plenty of people out there who think that way. Well, I've had patients ask me that. I've had patients come in who, you know, had used some gear and they come in and they're thinking, you know, I might have a little sensitivity or something, and not, there's nothing there. Right. And, I mean, to be honest with you, a, a disreputable surgeon could convince someone this is a way to make some money, right. or I, I'll go ahead and do it anyway. Um, and I've done patient, I've taken care of patients where I get to the operating room and the nursing staff are like, what are you doing? There's nothing there. And then I pull a ping pong ball out from behind the nipple and then they realize. Right. So, you know, so there's nothing to say that, you know, you couldn't just say, okay, you have gynecomastia and do it. But it, from my perspective, the risk of putting a patient through that is not worth it. You know, yeah, it's not, yeah. you know. It is amazing to me at what you see visually you're like, ah, so it's not too bad. And then you right. pull out this giant tadpole yeah. with a long four-inch tail. And and I take pictures of almost yeah, every, the, the steroid or prohormone related specimens. I take a picture because so many times the patients want to see it. Um, and I, I have some amazing <laughs> chunks of stuff that I've yeah. shown patients afterwards that they didn't think their situation was all that bad. Right. Yeah, it can be impressive. Well, there you have it. We, uh... We've covered everything, and um, again, I thank you so much. Well, thank you. We will uh, we'll, we'll revisit this. We'll come back and, and do something again, uh, maybe focus a little more on a different um, topic. Anytime. My All pleasure. Right. Awesome. Good. Thank you, brother. Awesome. Thank you. This is the Boston Mass. Thanks again for watching. Now, if you're not subscribing, subscribe now. Tell all your friends to subscribe. If you haven't, do it now. All right?